been looking forward to this for quite some time! Atrocitus, the ruthless leader of the Red Lantern Corps, on a self-imposed mission to avenge the death of his family and people, DC's Atrocitus is an alien who leads the Red Lantern Corps. He was created by writer Jeff Johns and artist Ethan Van Skyver. Before he had founded the Corps, Atrocitus underwent an arduous journey as he seeked power to go against the perpetrators of his misery. In the process, he learnt a lot about the universe, particularly prophecies, made allies and enemies, and discovered a black power that went far and beyond the power harnessed by the light of the lanterns. Even though he's deemed to be a supervillain, several fans consider him to be an anti-hero. In fact, he is quite the victim in his situation. Even though his morals aren't the best, in this video we will go over his journey as the survivor of a massacre to a formidable foe. Before diving into the content, we would like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to Marvelous Videos. Like and comment on our videos and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a video. We would be grateful to you and we hope to bring you the best nerdy content. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. From escaping death to a dreaded villain. Before we get to the details, let's go over the power of emotion, shall we? After sentient life began in the universe, an interesting spectrum was created, the emotional spectrum. It branched out into seven colors, where each color was the representative of an emotion, and these emotions powered the core of their respective colors. The Green Lantern Core are powered by green, the color of willpower. Yellow is the representative of fear, think parallax. Blue is hope, violet is love, orange is avarice. Indigo is compassion, and lastly, red is rage. This red light of rage powers the Red Lantern Corps, which has been founded and is led by Atrocitus himself. Characterized by his uncontrollable rage, he often makes his opponents succumb to their own anger. However, it's not all black and white or good and bad with him since there's a reason he's so angry. A group of robotic sentinels, aka the Manhunters, were created to safeguard the universe, or act as the universal police force. These robots were devoid of any emotion, and they only ruled by logic. As a result, they couldn't differentiate between right and wrong from a moral point of view. At first, the plan worked out perfectly, i.e. until the Manhunters experienced a simultaneous glitch where they believed that as long as organic life exists, there cannot be order in the universe. And so, they slaughtered almost everyone in the worlds of Sector 666. During the massacre of Sector 666, the Guardians of the Universe caused the death of Atrocitus's family. As a result of this atrocity, he swore revenge and made an enemy out of the Guardians. There were five remaining survivors, and Atrocitus was one of them alongside Royum, Cole, and two others. Together, they formed the Five Inversions to avenge those who were killed. Since the Manhunters were unleashed by the Guardians, the Guardians directly came under Atrocitus' line of fire, who became the leader of this organization. The Five Inversions used sorcery and blood rituals to find a power that they could use against the Guardians. Somewhere down the line, they saw a future where the universe was the void of life, i.e. the Blackest Night. Now, they wanted to harness the power of Black. Interestingly, there is a power system where several living beings are fueled by powers stemming from colors and light. But when every color is absorbed, it creates black, a color which signifies the absence of color. Anyway, they formed the Empire of Tears, a domain that spanned almost three galaxies. However, the Guardians took on the Five Inversions in their own domain and crucified them on Yasmalt, their throne world. The planet was also declared to be off-limits to the Green Lantern Corps, so you can see how Atrocitus had a very rough start. Later, they were seeked out by the Green Lantern named Abin Sur, who tried to find the survivors of a crash. Atrocitus refused to be of assistance to him, but Cole, one of the five inversions, helped him out. Cole told Sir about the location of the survivors, Sir's fate, and the prophecy that predicted the Blackest Night. After this, Sir would often go back to Yasmalt to learn how the Blackest Night could be prevented. He even freed Atrocitus to take him to Earth, which was the origin planet of the Black. During this time, Atrocitus used the yellow impurity to instill fear in Sir to weaken him. He then escaped after wounding Sir mortally and landed on Earth. Atrocitus violently rampaged the planet, killing innumerable troopers. Here, he performed a ritual which made him seek out Black Hand, 
or William Hand, the herald of the blackest night. Atrocitus created a cosmic weapon to seek out Hand and track a human who would supposedly play a big role in the blackest night. Atrocitus believed that Hand's insides held the doorway to the darkness so he tried to take him back to Yismalt, but he was stopped by a rookie, Hal Jordan, and Sinestro. William Hand was saved, but Atrocitus attacked with his new device. It depleted the lantern rings of its powers, but Sinestro's power battery came to the rescue. However, they still weren't strong enough to overpower Atrocitus. However, Hal Jordan saved the day, and Atrocitus was contained and taken to Oa. Later, Sinestro was given a prophecy by the Five Inversion, one about a rebellion plaguing Sinestro's homeworld of Kordogar. Rage of the Red Lanterns After the Sinestro Core War, Atrocitus became the first person to wield the power of rage with a Red Lantern power battery. He sought out Sinestro, who used to call himself the greatest Green Lantern in the past. Atrocitus' power battery needed blood for activation, and he got that blood after he used the ring to beat his ally, Cole, to death. He then founded the Red Lantern Corps to destroy Sinestro, killed the other inversions, formed a central power battery with their blood, and created a red power ring. No matter how rageful he was, he could not go against Sinestro by himself mainly because Sinestro would obviously have aid and allies. So Atrocitus gave out the Red Lantern Rings to some of Sinestro's victims to form his own army. They were able to absolutely demolish several Green Lantern Corps as well as those from the Sinestro Corps. In the end, Sinestro was captured and Atrocitus and company headed back to Yismo. In the capital, Sinestro was crucified as Atrocitus vowed to destroy Korrigar, Sinestro Corps, and the Green Lantern Corps by using Sinestro's blood for new rings to power his Red Lantern Corps. To take a huge toll on Sinestro and instill him with fear, Atrocitus decided to kill his daughter. However, the Sinestro Corps and the Blue Lanterns arrived to rescue Sinestro when Jordan was able to injure Atrocitus. They saved Sinestro and retreated to Quart while Atrocitus tracked down the homeworld of the Blue Lanterns. Blackest Night the most anticipated storyline with reference to Atrocitus, Blackest Night saw the descent of Black Power Rings onto Yasmal. It revived the bodies of the other inversions, after which Cole tried to kill Atrocitus, who survived because the Red Lantern Ring can replace the heart. After taking an L against Hal Jordan and company, Atrocitus agreed to aid them in their battle against the Black Lanterns. However, he would go back to his original scheme of killing the Guardians after the conflict. During this time, Atrocitus sensed the spirit of a Black Lantern Spectre and wished to obtain its powers after freeing the spirit. Parallax ended up freeing the Spectre, but Atrocitus could not harness its power as it was the true spirit of rage and vengeance, and it wasn't up for being trifled with. Brightest Day Atrocitus is once again made to work alongside Guy Gardner and Ganthan for a mission. He arrives in New York City to find the entities of the emotional spectrum. He uses their blood to perform rituals that allow him to locate every entity except Parallax and Ion. In this storyline, it also revealed that despite being the embodiment of rage, Atrocitus had developed some heart and sensitivity as he did not want to kill the innocent. That shouldn't be a surprise since this guy is taking things this far to avenge his people, and not because of some unjustified rage and bloodlust. In fact, he had a wife and children who were killed during the Manhunter's massacre. Atrocitus locates the rage entity known as the Butcher and imprisons it. During this time, he comes across Krona, the Owen whose actions created the Guardians. Atrocitus took out his pent-up anger against him after years of waiting. However, Krona exercised the rage entity that Atrocitus had captured to harness its powers and ended up defeating Atrocitus and the new Guardians. Following this, Krona left with the entities while the new Guardians and Atrocitus had to find Krona again. War of the Green Lanterns Following Krona's departure, Larflees detects Ophidian, Entity of Avarice, at Riot. The other new Guardians and Atrocitus follow suit to find Krona, who is missing in action. Here, they come across the Book of the Black, which reveals that the glitch that caused the Manhunters to wipe out Sector 666 was programmed by Krona himself. Later, Guy, Ganthet, and Atrocitus made a pact, which stated that after Krona was defeated, he would be handed over to Atrocitus for justice. I am 
atrocities. Lord, the first comic book appearance explored. For his very first appearance, Atrocitus did not get a specific storyline of his own. He appeared kind of in the comic version of a cameo role in Green Lantern Volume 4, Issue 25. The comic was published on November 5, 2007, but had a cover date of January 2008. It was written by Jeff Johns, who has a plethora of big names under his belt such as Flashpoint, several Green Lantern comics, Justice League Origin, and so on. This issue revolves around the Sinestro Corps and ends with the birth of the Black Lantern. Within the first 10 pages of the story, after the colors of the emotional spectrum are introduced, a two-page spread of a battle reveals Atrocitus for the very first time in the bottom right section of the page. As the Green Lantern Corps and the Sinestro Corps battle each other, Gantha and Sid discuss the situation with the exiled Green Lanterns on Earth. They talk about the Blackest Night, which will unfold as the seven colors of the Lantern Corps fight one another. Of course, Atrocitus would be a part of this as the leader of the Red Lantern Corps. What makes him so powerful? The Green Lantern is powerful enough to be one of the primary members of the Justice League. Naturally, as the leader of the Red Lanterns, Atrocitus' strength and abilities put him in a very powerful position. He has a Red Power Battery and a Red Power Ring, the origins of which we have briefly discussed previously. Starting with the obvious Red Power Ring, it can help Atrocitus affect and use the universe's fundamental forces such as radiation, gravity, light, heat, and powerful blasts. He could also create force fields with energy from the user's will. Atrocitus can use it to make people succumb to their own pent-up rage. It allows Red Lanterns to obtain the unique abilities of other Red Lanterns, provided the former drinks the blood of the latter. Vampires, but make it cooler. It can also absorb rage energy and affect the electromagnetic fields to allow the user to fly. So far, these are just the abilities of the ring that Atrocitus can wield, but that's not all that makes him dangerous. With his alien physiology, Atrocitus has superhuman strength and durability. One of his most OP abilities that he uses time and again is his magic. Atrocitus uses blood magic born from ancient rituals to use the powers of the Empire of Tears and the Five Inversions. He could also use the blood rituals to discover the future and attain knowledge of prophecies such as that of the Blackest Night and the Fall of Sinestro. He also uses it to track down someone, which he did to find William Hand and the entities of the colors of the emotional spectrum with magic, electromagnetic fields, impressive physical stats, and an unimaginable rage at his disposal. Wanting to make an enemy out of Atrocitus would be atrocious. He has villainous instincts but a layered and complex personality. As a result, Atrocitus has occasionally expressed his grief in front of his foes. In fact, a smooth and happy life is not the type that births seething rage in one's heart, making Atrocitus a character who people can sympathize with. And it's good to blow off some steam once in a while, eh? What did you think of Atrocitus? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on the video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one. Your world is burning, and when it is ashes, you will beg for vengeance!